You have the floor. Thank you very much. I'm speaking on behalf of Human Rights First. We are dedicated to building respect for human rights and the rule of law, and we work to reverse the rising tide of hate crimes and discrimination to protect free fundamental freedoms. Human Rights First congratulates the Special Rapporteur for his report, detailing cases of religious intolerance and condemning acts of violence against individuals based on religion or belief. We believe that the Special Rapporteur is providing a good framework whereby states will be able to better measure their commitments in confronting the forms of discrimination addressed. Human Rights First fully supports the recommendations of the Special Rapporteur in paragraph 90 of his report, whereby he encourages states to move away from the notion of defamation, and he urges them to anchor the debate in the relevant existing international legal framework. We oppose all efforts to create internationally binding obligations that aim to criminalize defamation. Nationally blasphemy laws are all too often abused to stifle debate and to target members of religious minorities. Such laws serve to protect ideas rather than individuals, and they enable states to define which views are acceptable and which are not. Today, the depth of hatred, anger, and violence expressed against many religions, religious, ethnic, national, and other minorities is alarming. The rise of anti-Muslim bias and intolerance must be taken very seriously. But restricting speech is not the answer to fighting hatred. What we need more of is public condemnation of hate crimes, as well as effective policies of inclusion, equality, and protection of fundamental rights and freedoms. We agree with the Special Rapporteur when he states in paragraph 91 that legislative responses are far from being sufficient to bring around real changes in mindsets, perceptions, and discourse. In recent months, there have been a number of anti-Muslim incidents in the United States that have caused many people to feel concern. Those incidents, including Burn Koran Day and the obstruction of the building of several mosques and cultural centers, were driven by fear and ignorance. The debate surrounding the Burn Koran Day in the United States provide an excellent example of how non-legislative measures successfully confront and counteract incitement and violence. The rhetoric of an isolated extremist was drowned out by the voices of everyday citizens as well as scores of political, religious and military leaders from across the spectrum who all used their voices to speak out against hatred. The proposed event was finally cancelled. Human Rights First organized an online initiative asking supporters to send us their top 10 reasons why not to burn a Koran. We received over 5,000 suggestions from individuals eager to express their opposition to the burning. To conclude, Mr. Chair, we call on all delegates to follow the recommendations of the Special Rapporteur and to ensure that existing international norms are better implemented at international, national and local levels. Thank you very much.